figure out where that power fade comes from. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. You ever think of trying sleep instead of Benzedrine? You know, you might like it. Brother, I've had some tough nuts to crack in my time. Thanks. Uh, nothing like this. And to top it off, this guy has to go and get himself killed right outside the base. Hmm, if he was killed. What do you mean? Well, he could have died from natural causes, you know. Uh, a switch coming from a base security man. You fellows are usually suspicious of everything. Okay. Here's the sentry's report. And uh, this just came in from the FBI. It's what they have on the dead man, Grisel. Yeah? Jacques Grisel, 35, French-Canadian, graduate of Toronto University, specialized in scientific farming, good war record, born in Toronto and went north for farming after the war. Has sister Barbara, age 24, living on the farm with him. Well, both the Grisels got a clean slate. There's nothing suspicious about them. Yeah? What was Grisel doing in the woods at 3 o'clock in the morning? Farming? Cigarette? No, thanks. But what are you going to do now? Get yourself all involved in this business? Let the local authorities figure it out, Jeff. Well, the colonel doesn't think it's that easy, and neither do I. Besides, who can forget the look on that dead man's face? Well, there's probably some simple explanation. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe Doc Warren has the answer. He should be finished with the autopsy by now. Let's go on over. Okay. Jeff. Al. Oh, hi, Doc. I've just been trying to get you. Well, what's the story? Sit down. I wasn't able to perform your autopsy. Why not? Because the mayor of Winthrop and a local doctor named Bradley, who's the coroner, too, came up and claimed the body this morning. Well, why didn't you call me? The mayor had already talked to the colonel. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, what's the difference? They've got the body, so it's finished. Finished? Yeah, I wouldn't bet on it. They'll probably blame the death on our atomic reactors. Mm. It's his fear of radioactive fallout. And we're not exploding atom bombs. We're just using atomic power for our radar experiments. Sure, go out and tell them that. You know we're a thousand miles from the nearest decent-sized city? Mm. What a bunch of backward people. They've blamed us for too little rain, too much rain, the blight, the beetle, even Mrs. O'Leary's ailing cow. That's why we have to have an autopsy, so we can prove that death wasn't caused by radiation. Well, the coroner said it was heart failure. That ought to do it. He's one of them. Well, you can't figure their minds, though. Excuse me, sir. Colonel Butler phoned to ask the Major to report to his office right away. All right, Mr. Mayor, if that's the way it is. No sense in asking you again, is there? No, sir. There'll be no autopsy. Come in. Oh, Major Cummings. Is that for me, sir? Yes, Major. I'd like to introduce Miss Barbara Grizel and Mayor Hawkins, Major Cummings. How do you do? Major? If you don't mind, Colonel, I've made up my mind. It's all settled. Just this one point. You know that our governments, Canada and the USA, have set up this base as a joint protection for our people. We know that. And we've told you that we feel that the refusal of an autopsy... Uh, sorry, Miss Grizel. Refusing to do it won't disrupt the effort. Miss Grizel? Mayor Hawkins, I'm no parlor diplomat. I'm an army man. I'm straightforward, maybe even blunt. But I'm afraid I must use stronger methods of persuasion. You recognize this, Miss Grizel? It's your brother's notebook. He's made some very interesting notations. Major, take a look at this page here. What's it look like to you? A timetable schedule. You know what the time's indicated in each line? What is it? Well, the schedule of our takeoffs and landings. That's enough to give me what I want, Miss Grizel. May I have a look at that notebook? Give it to her, Major. This schedule is a list of your takeoff and landings. Our herd's milk had fallen off in cream content. And my brother felt it was due to the jets flying overhead. That's why he was gathering this information. If you notice in the following pages, here's what it says. Helen, less nervous today. Quality low. Diane, apathetic. Quality poor. Mabel, very pert. General improvement. And so on with the other members of the herd. 
This was a daily reaction of each cow. Perhaps the colonel can tell us what he thought the items referred to. Well, I guess that's all we have to discuss. Thank you for coming. You know, the colonel's a nice guy, really, but, well, he does have his problems. You don't have to apologize for him. I'm not. It's just that he has a job to do, a difficult one under the circumstances. Please, I'd rather not discuss it. Okay. I was only trying to... Trying to what? Oh, I don't know. I guess I was looking for a way to say I... Well, I understand what you've been through. Do you? What the heck? I'm human. We're all human here. We're not monsters from outer space. <laughs> Well, thanks. What for? Oh. For the lift and the words of comfort. I wish I could do more. I've no hard feelings if that's what you're thinking. Well, I was, but not anymore. Sir. Now, Green Dog, Green Dog, this is Pyramid. Are you ready for Test Baker? Over. This is Green Dog. This is Green Dog. We are circling quite easily at 40,000 feet. Standing by for Test Baker. Over. Okay, Green Dog, commence Test Baker. Commence Test Baker. Over. Try starting out on the 500 mile range. Set for the 500 mile range, Sergeant. Master Scope, set at 500 mile range. Generator set, position six, Charlie. Start scanning, normal speed. Scanning, normal speed. Increase scanning speed, 20 RPMs. Scanning now, 20 RPMs. Increase range to 1,000 miles. Range increase to 1,000 miles, sir. Steady on your sensitive control, number three. Right, sir. Increase range to 1,500 miles. Range increasing to 1,500 miles, sir. Hold it steady now, Sergeant. Right, sir. Okay, Sergeant. Increase to 2,000 miles. Increasing range to 2,000 miles, sir. Range increase to 2,000. Look, sir. Siberia. Increase range of 2,500 miles. Range increase to 2,500, sir. If we can keep this equipment working right, we can watch those Russians 24 hours a day right in their own backyard. We can spot any plane, any missile, anything that's airborne. Image is fading, sir. There it goes again. Same trouble. Well, green dog, green dog, this is Pyramid. Check your equipment. Our image is fading. Repeat. Check your equipment. Our image is fading. Over. This is Green Dog. This is Green Dog. Our equipment is working okay. Over. The signal's going out okay from here, sir. There's no drop in power. There must be some interference again. There's no other answer. We'll try increasing the power. Well, sir, we're pushing the atomic plant as much as we can now. We've got to lick this power fade. Tell them to pour it on. Peterson. Well, Pete, this is Cummings, Master Control. We want you to give us everything you've got. But, Jeff, we've already exceeded the design limits. Every time you take a test, you ask for more power. If I take any more of those rods out, the reactor's liable to get out of control. Well, take some more out. We'll have to risk it. We've got to have more power. Okay, it's your funeral. Mine, too, probably. Remove ten more rods from reactor number three. That's yeah, I know, but it's an order.
Power's been boosted, sir, but still can't increase image further. It doesn't matter how much we boost the transmitter power, it doesn't reach the plane. You know, it's almost as if the power were being drained off. Well, we'll just have to keep working on it. Yeah, and in the meantime, what new excuse do I give the Pentagon? This is Green Dog. This is Green Dog. Standing by for instructions. Over. Okay, Green Dog. Okay, Green Dog. Test Baker is completed. Return to base. Repeat. Test Baker is completed. Return to base. Over. Roger and out. Okay, Sergeant. Let's close shop. Jacques Grisel's sum of good overshadows the other. What has he marked up in the ledger for good as against the ledger for bad? He was a good, generous man. His word of service. And now we consecrate the worldly remains of our beloved Jack to the good earth from whence he sprang. Closer and closer. Thank goodness the cows are getting used to them. Aye. Are we eating soon? It'll be ready in a minute. I just want to feed the chickens first. See you home, Barbara. No, thank you, Mayor. I think I'd better go back with Professor Walker and keep my mind occupied. You sure you want to? My work can wait, you know. Say, Mayor! Mayor, Ben Adams and his wife are dead, same as young Grizel. Where? Up at the farm. At the edge of the air base. But, Mayor Hawkins, you're taking a great deal for granted. There is absolutely no evidence pointing to radioactive fallout or radioactive contamination of any kind. Yes, we'll do everything we can, I assure you. Yes. Yes. Goodbye. In addition to our headaches with the Pentagon, we're now being accused of killing off the people in this town. Perhaps they'd cooperate, sir, if we could explain more about our anti-missile program. I mean, not the secret stuff. You know but... that's impossible, Jeff. Come in. It'll be rough if the town turns against us. Sir, we began a complete investigation of the Adams farm. But the local constable, a man named Gibbons, told us to get off the place. Said it came under his jurisdiction and we had no business being there. What kind of cooperation do you call that? Well, they're nervous, upset. We've got to find out how those people died. Well, suppose you get hold of the Adams relatives. See if you can persuade them to let us do an autopsy. Yes, sir, I'll try. Reassure them. Promise them anything. But get hold of those bodies. I made a complete autopsy in both cases. Call Dr. Bradley in to check my findings, and our opinions concur. It's fantastic. On the examination of the skull of Mr. Adams, I noticed two small holes in the base of the occipital region here. They penetrated to the medulla oblongata where the spinal cord meets the brain. I opened the skull to investigate and found this. For the brain, it's gone. Yes. Sucked out like an egg through those two holes. That's not all. The entire spinal cord is missing. But 
<laughs> That's incredible. It's as if some mental vampire were at work. Where's the brain and spinal cord gone? I'm a doctor, Colonel, not a detective. There's nothing like this in the books. Major Cummings had the best explanation so far. Mental vampire. That's rubbish. Possibly some animal. Colonel, Colonel, I've lived in these backwoods all my life. And I can assure you there's no animal in these parts or anywhere else for that matter that could do that. Maybe that guy Gibbons was right about the supernatural. Well, whatever the explanation, we'll find it. We must find it. In the meantime, Doctor, I trust I can rely on your discretion. Not to tell the mayor or the townspeople. <laughs> of course, I've got an overworked practice as it is, Colonel. Thank you. Dr. Warren, I want you to get on the phone. Consult the top medical specialists, wherever they are. Yes, sir. Captain, contact the best authorities. Tell them what the problem is. Find out what they have to say about it. Jeff, the townsfolk know you. Talk to them. Check on anything that seems to be extraordinary, no matter what it is. Grizel? Oh, Miss Grizel, I, uh... Great. Look, um... Miss Grizel, I, I'm sorry for, um, barging in like that, but, uh... Well, I knocked and there was no answer, and the door was open, so I... Make yourself at home, Major. I'll be out in a minute. Uh, thank you. I was just um, glancing around. That's all right. Professor Wargate was preparing these for publication anyway. Oh, are you correlating his material? I do most of it. He dictates on this. I edit the tapes and prepare the draft manuscripts. Oh, some job. Mm, but interesting. Well, the professor must be quite a guy. Thought control, cybernetics, all that stuff. Mm, that's only half of it. That's strange, isn't it? Finding a man like that here in, uh, in Winthrop. In these uncivilized backwards, I think you were going to say. <laughs> well, I'm afraid so. <laughs> well, the explanation is quite a simple one. Professor Walgate had a stroke about five years ago. He's retired now. Oh, he still works. Mm, and at odd hours. Odd hours? Mm, he thinks nothing of starting work at 11 at night and working until the small hours of the morning. Hmm. You know, the mayor mentioned that Walgate was an authority on psychic phenomena. Is that still a hobby of his? I don't know. If it is, you'll have Dr. Bradley after him. Dr. Bradley said no more overwork or excitement. What about you? What do you mean? Well, don't you ever get some time off? Well, sometimes. Hello, Howard. Come on in. Oh, this is Major Cummings from the base. Oh. Yeah, I know. We, we've met. Well, I uh, guess I'll be running along. But you've only just been here a few minutes. Oh, I'm just passing on my way back to the base. Quite a roundabout route. The new airfield extension covers a lot of ground. Too much for one throps like It must keep you pretty busy. Yes, yes, there's a lot to do. I bet there is. Come again. You found that GI killer yet? 
You know, you'd be far better off hunting him down instead of Tom Catton around here. Cut it out, the both of you. Come on. Sorry. I hope I didn't break anything. I think you'd better leave, Major. You've done enough damage for one morning. When you tell me you haven't known me long enough. Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll see you later. How do you like that? She says we haven't been properly introduced, and she's a nurse. Well, I'll be made out better with the museums and stuff. No, not a chance. They all think I'm crazy. How'd you make out? Listen, now, we've got work to do. Uh, uh, you're the guy who works after five, remember, not me. Now, wait a minute. This is serious. I want you to give me all the information you can on our Professor Waldy. Everything he's ever written. Books, articles, everything. this guy in junk by tomorrow night. So long, Mayor. Was all right now. Let's stop this nonsense. No fancy atomic radiation caused these deaths. What about the mayor? What killed him? Who are you trying to fool, Gibbons? It's the atomic fallout. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it, fellas. Hold it. Someone murdered the mayor. The same maniac that killed Jack Grisell, Ben Adams, and his wife. All right, Gibbons, where is he? If you'll shut up, I'll tell you. Right there. Let him talk. Now, the fellow we're after is out there in the woods. Probably some air-based GI that's gone wild. Now, we can't get far if we move fast and I say, let's stop jabbering and get after Wait, him. let's get him. All right, now, let's go. Right, fellas, let's find this guy. A 
sharp lookout, okay? Okay, let's go. This just came in from the FBI. Hmm. Walgate, brilliant scientist, recluse, considered highly eccentric. That old guy, Walgate. Sounds like a cross between Einstein and Robinson Crusoe, sir. It gets more interesting all the time. Okay, Sergeant, I'm going out for a while. to see you again. I'm very busy. Well, I'd uh, like to see the professor. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Come in. Professor Walgate, Major Cummings from the air base to see you. Sorry to barge in like this, uh, Professor. Not at all. These days I welcome any excuse to stop work. Isn't that so, Barbara? Please take a chair, Major. Oh, thank you. I, um, I came to see you about this, this business with the mayor. Oh, terrible tragedy, really terrible. So I need your help, Professor. Anything you say, just name it. Well, this is the fourth death in the space of a few days. Uh, not only are they terrible tragedies in themselves, but they're turning the townsfolk against us at the base. It's just ignorance, my dear fellow. These people are simple, one might say. Narrow in their outlook. Of course, the very secrecy of your activities doesn't help. This development of radar boosted by atomic power. What gave you that idea, sir? Well, there was a piece in the Atom Journal about your work on reactors. More than a year ago, and I read somewhere about the new radar patterns. Of course, this territory's ideal for that kind of work. I put two and two together. And made five? So we say four and a half. But you don't have to worry, Major. What I surmise, I keep to myself. Well, I hope so, sir. Well, let me offer you a drink. Whiskey? Uh, yes, please. Uh, straight. Barbara. Uh, no, thank you, Professor. I'll have the last chapter finished tomorrow. That's fine. That's real progress. I've already begun on volume two. My mind is fairly buzzing with these strange <laughs> words. <laughs> Just a few elementary ideas on the subject, Major. Not so advanced as present-day developments. I'll transcribe these while you talk. Excuse me. That business of her brother, she was devoted to him. Yes, it was a tough break. I don't want to seem morbid, but did you see his face after he died? Yes. What was it like? I have a reason for asking. Well, it, it was an expression of complete horror. Fright. Almost insane, I guess. Did you get him? What kid? Okay, fellas. Okay, okay. Put it in. No, just a false alarm. That's all. As you said yourself, sir, the people here are simple and superstitious. Yeah, maybe they're not so wrong after all. What do you mean? Mm. About the supernatural. 
Something unreal, something never seen by anyone before? I can't accept that. I've always disproved such theories. What is it, then? Nothing supernatural, I'm sure. I can't believe that. I'm a scientist. You've made a study of psychic phenomena, haven't you? I tell you, it can't be that. It, it can't be. Professor, you know what Dr. Bradley said. Was it absolutely necessary to upset the professor? It's, it's nothing, nothing, Barbara. The Major and I were just having a quiet talk. I got dizzy. Well, your quiet little talk is over, Major. First Howard Gibbons, now the professor. Do you have to go around making trouble? You really believe that, don't you? Well, I can believe my eyes. I'm sorry, Professor. I didn't mean to disturb you. No, not at all. Forgive me if I don't rise. Yes, sir. Excuse me. It's me! It's Burke! Have you finished searching the quarry yet? Yeah, and the men are tired. They want to go home. But they can't quit now. We've almost reached the air base. Well, you better tell them they won't listen to me. Okay, fellas, you spread out again. We'll join up at the Adams fence. <laughs> Say, you hear something? Yeah, funny sound. You take that path and I'll take this one. If you see anything, shout. You said not to let each other out of sight. These paths run almost parallel to each other. We'll meet up a ways anyway. The dawn's beginning to come up. Wait a little. We'll see better then. Oh, well, we're closer there now. Come on, boy. Go on, fella. You take that one. I think you should go home, Mrs. Gibbon. No, I'm all right, Doctor. I'll wait here for my boy. Don't worry, we'll find him. Oh, where's Howard? Where is he? We've searched everywhere. Yeah, he just disappeared. Oh, I don't believe it. He must be there. I'm going to look for him myself. You can't go in the woods alone. Oh, but i got to find him. I've got to find my boy. Uh, you'd better see that she gets home. Get your wife to look after her. Have you searched the woods thoroughly? We kept calling for him. If Gibbons is out there and still alive, he would have heard us. No point in searching anymore. I reckon we ought to call a council meeting and decide what we're going to do. Yeah, what about it, Bradley? Well, let's get Melville. He's a deputy mayor. I suppose it's up to him. Good evening, my Everyone quiet, please. Now you all know why we're here. We've had four deaths, and now our constable has disappeared. The cause of these deaths is still unknown. Everybody seems to have their own ideas, and they all seem connected with the new air base. Now you're talking. 
For this reason, I've asked Major Cummings to this meeting. He's going to help us in any way he possibly can. That goes for his commanding officer, Colonel Butler, who is very concerned about what's happened. Cut out the soft soap, Melville. Let's get down to brass tacks. All I know is, before this air base came here, we were doing fine. Now you and these Air Force fellows tell us that it's not radiation at all. Well, maybe you're right at that. I don't know. But forgetting about the deaths, how do you explain the change in quality of the cow's milk, even the quantity? Let the Major tell me about that. Go ahead, Major. Well, no one can make anyone believe something if they don't want to believe it. But it has been positively proven that there is no radiation affecting anyone in Winthrop. Mm. Not even the cows. As for the milk, I don't know enough about farming, but I would assume... Rizal did. He knew his business. And so do I. It was the noise of the jets that did it. Nothing more. It frightened the herd. But I can tell you that the herd is normal again. They've got used to it. Thank you. As for the deaths, gentlemen, we are equally at a loss to give an answer, and equally disturbed. Now, there's been some talk of a mad G.I. on the prowl. Well, this, I can assure you, is not true. We've checked and rechecked our personnel. We know how you feel, but we're trying to protect our country from a guided missile attack. If you would only help us instead of fighting us. Uh, it's all a waste of time. Let's get rid of the base. We had no trouble before they came here. We'll have no trouble after they leave. I think that's rather foolish, Adam. It was terrible, Jeff. What could have happened to him? I don't know. Would you like a drink? No, no, thanks. Barbara, I think Professor Walgate is involved in these deaths. I don't understand. No, neither do I. Maybe it's just a hunch, but his background, his training... Oh, Jeff. Look, Barbara, I've checked on Walgate. This, uh, this research of his, somehow I think it ties in with what's happened here in Winthrop. Oh, that's crazy. Is it? Mind if I borrow this? Where are you going? I'd like to take a look at your cemetery.
Any word yet from Major Cummings? Not a thing yet, sir. Well, keep trying. Hello? Uh, hello, Miss Grizel. This is Captain Chester. I've been trying to locate Major Cummings. Well, he left here about 7.30. Well, did he say where he was going? Yes, he, he borrowed a flashlight from me and said something about going to the cemetery. Look, I don't like the sound of all this. You wait there. I'll be over right away. the place all right. Dreaming, buddy. It's Barbara. Well, they're locked in. No air. Take it easy now. Come on, let's get going. We'll, we'll get you back to the base. Come on. Come on. I gotta see Walgate. Yeah, no shape to see anybody. I've got to see Walgate. Come in. Good evening. Major Cummings. For Barbara. It's very late. I hope you don't mind, sir. Oh, on the contrary. I'm glad to see you. Sit down, won't you? We, uh, we missed you at the town council meeting. I saw Gibbons afterwards. His mind was gone completely mad. It's dreadful. I was hoping maybe you could help us, sir. Me? How, how could I help you? You're an atomic expert. Who told you that? Our files in Washington. Have you been checking on me? Yes. Oh. Yeah, would you, um... You care for a cigarette, Professor? No, thanks. I'm attached to my pipe. Uh, Professor, I read one of your books on the uh, materialization of thought. Uh, you denied that it was possible, but the thought was intriguing. Yes, if it could be done, why, man could create power by thought. He could will a door to open. He could perform useful work without moving from his chair. Practically anything. I said it was impossible, but mm. didn't I? Is it? Perhaps with atomic power it could be done. Oh, please, I'm tired and sick. Stop badgering me, please. I will if you'll answer me a few questions. Jeff! I'm sorry, but I've got to go on. What were you doing in the cemetery tonight, Professor? Were you, um, looking for this? I didn't mean to shut you in, close the door on you. I was frightened when I heard you. I, I only wanted time to get away. I only realized later that you might be shut, trapped. I, I called Barbara, but she... If she hadn't rescued me, I wouldn't be alive. Jeff. What were you doing there, Professor? I had to examine the mayor's body. I had to find out the truth. What was that? Professor, what's the Professor, matter? what's the matter? Yeah, it's okay. Professor, can you hear me? It's a terrible story. Shut down your atomic plant. Wait, huh? Call Dr. Bradley right away. I'm going back to the base. Jeff, be careful. I'm afraid. I'll be back right away. If I try that again, we'll have more time. But the thing's fantastic. You can't shut down a whole atomic power plant on such a wild theory. Well, you can't deny the facts, sir. Grizel, the Adams couple, the mayor, 
They all died a few minutes after the peak of our radar test, right after our atomic plant was operating under full power. But it'll take months to get the plant operating again. Well, it's better than risking any more lives or madmen like Gibbons. Okay. Let's put it on ice. How soon you'll be ready, Pete? We'll shut her down in five minutes. The rods are all smashed. What happened? I don't know. We just found them all broken. We'll never be able to shut her down now. What about spares? You know how we put this place together, Jeff. We've no extras of anything. Well, there must be some way of controlling the reaction. Well, the rods, we don't stand a chance. The nearest supply would be at the Hanford Works in the Columbia River. How soon can we get a shipment flown in here? Well, four to six hours, if you phone right now. Get me the Hanford Works on the Columbia River right away. Well, Doc, how is he? Oh, there's no question. It's another attack a little more serious than the last. He'll be all right. Oh, sure, sure, sure. See, he gets plenty of rest. Call me if there's any change. For goodness sake, get somebody out here to stay with you. Jeff, uh, Major Cummings said he'll be back soon. Jeff, Major Cummings? <laughs> Obviously, those rods were destroyed. How and for what reason, we don't know. But we do know that we're in trouble up here. Serious trouble. Hello. Yes, put her through. It's for you, Jeff. Barbara Grizel. Thank you. Hello, Barbara. Okay, good. We'll be right over. Right, right. Walgate, you're gaining consciousness. I think we'd better get over there right away, sir. Right. Now, we better get some sidearms. Check. Casper. Get hold of Dr. Bradley and Melville right away. Have them meet us at Walgate's house. I shall feel better after I've told you everything. Maybe you can help me to clear up this ghastly business. But no matter what you do to me, remember those horrible deaths were beyond my control. Go on, Professor. For many years now, I have been working on a theory of thought materialization. The entire apparatus to give it the required boost is in my laboratory. Laboratory? Didn't know you had one. There were many things you didn't know, my child. If you had, you'd never have come here again. You can see it later. But I knew I could never succeed on the principles of telepathy. I needed to stimulate my brain to the extent that I could detach thought from my conscious to give it a separate entity of its own. I concentrated on the simplest experiment to turn the page of a book. I designed an instrument to create a sudden and powerful electrical boost to help me free my thought. But each application of the electric charge created a shock almost equal to electrocution. It made me ill. Dr. Bradley diagnosed exhaustion. He thought my illness was caused by overwork in getting my papers ready for publication. He introduced me to Barbara Grizel. With Barbara as my secretary, I was able to satisfy my publisher and continue my experiments to materialize thought. For a long time, I persisted in this one experiment without success. Until one night. Lightning in striking the house gave my instruments a sudden violent charge of power. And my thought was free. Free to turn the page of a book. I altered the design of my equipment to generate these violent power boosts. But it was very dangerous. And I could only undergo each experiment after a long period of rest. Whenever I felt well enough to absorb the shock, I found no difficulty in moving small objects. Eventually, I developed a certain tolerance to the high voltages I used. 
But what I really needed for regular experiments was a new form of power. Something that was smoother, something that would flow through my brain without causing collapse. The new atomic plant at the air base provided me with this power. I devised additional apparatus that enabled me to divert a portion of the atomic power that was radiating between the ground station and the radar aircraft circling 40,000 feet above. It was power which I could control, and I learned how to amplify my thoughts without hurting myself. I was able to detach my thoughts and allow them to work on their own. I began to devise a being into which the thought, once released, could enter and preserve itself for all humanity. I envisage something akin to the human brain, with life and mobility, but without the limitations of man's body. I concentrated my entire thought on its creation. I succeeded, but like thought itself, it was invisible. That night I entered my laboratory to take advantage of a radar test, only to find the place in shambles. My equipment wrecked beyond repair. All of my notes about its creation and how I thought it could be controlled were destroyed. I knew now that I had created a fiend. There was no other explanation. I was helpless, but whom could I tell? Who would believe such a fantastic story? I could sense the presence of the fiend there in the room with me, growing more powerful with each succeeding day. My one desire was to destroy the thing, but I possessed no means of projecting my thought to do so. Then I could hear it. Was it possible that there were more than one? I was unable to stop them. They were now drawing power from the atomic station. Its intelligence had expanded. It now knew how to make its escape. And then followed these horrible deaths and Gibbon's madness. I had to know what I had done. I had to see one of the bodies. I went to the mayor's tomb. I now know that I have created a mental vampire. A fiend that needs to... Drain the intellect to survive and multiply. I'll get it. Supposing you're right, Professor, how does it live? How else but in the brains and nerve centers removed from these dead people? Then where are they and why can't we see them? This is nonsense. We're facing a new form of life that nobody understands. I believe it feeds on the radiation from your atomic plant. And that it's evil. Professor, it's my opinion that the evil's all in your mind. You're in need of medical assistance. Ah, oh, Doctor, I'm glad to see you're here. This man's become a raving lunatic. Hey, what's going on out there? Hey, look! Hello. Hello! Professor, what's wrong with your telephone? Nothing should be the matter, unless they've got enough intelligence to cut the lines. Jeff, I want you to get over to the air base. I want emergency patrols. He's dead. Now, give me a hand with this. Hey, quick, barricade that window! Professor, have you got anything we can nail across that window? There's some lumber in my laboratory. I've got to get out. I've got to get out of this. Pull yourself together and help me with this. Well, at least lock the door. Oh, never mind. Hey, 
Captain, give me a hand. If we'd only see them, we'd know what to do. Is there any way to make them visible? Not that I know, unless it's a question of the amount of atomic radiation that's available. Hello. Hello, Casper. Casper, I want to talk to the Colonel. Hello? Hello, Casper, are you there? Hello, hello. Out of here, I tell you. Oh, no, no. Melville, Melville, Melville. Melville, Melville, get a grip on yourself. Get a hold of yourself. Why are they so quiet? Maybe they're gonna leave us alone. I doubt it. But they've just put out a burst of energy. Perhaps they need to rest. Colonel Butler. Yes. How long does it take to shut down your atomic plant? Why? If my theory is right, then without the radiation of which I was speaking, these things must die. Good grief. What is it? What are you seeing? Let me through! Hey, Jeff, Professor, they're becoming visible. or something must have increased the power of the atomic plant. What have I unleashed? Ghastly, it's horrible. Oh, you can say that again. It all ties up with what Dr. Warren explained to us, sir. Look carefully. I'll get those sidearms. I'm sure it's the atomic plant. So long as it goes on, they will multiply, getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Well, anyway, they're mortal. got to stop him. There's only one way, shut down your atomic plant. Unless we shut off the radiation, we'll all be destroyed, and heaven knows how many others. Well, sir, there's a dynamite shed between here and the plant. If I can get through, I can blow up the control room. Well, if that's the way it's got to be. I'm afraid it is. Jeff! Must it be you, Jeff? Yeah, I, I know the control room layout. They don't. Be careful, Jeff, please. Yeah, I'll... And be sure to lock this door. He can't go alone. He won't last a minute amongst those fiends. It's too late, Professor. Anyway, somebody had to get through. Then cover him as he leaves the house. And shoot straight. Don't waste the shot. Can you see him? No, not yet.
You can't, Professor. You can't. It's suicide. For my creation, perhaps I can control them. Give Jeff a chance. Lock it after me. No. Take it easy now. I know that guy, and if anybody can get through, he can. long since Jeff left. Don't even think about it. It's so quiet. I wonder what they're up to. Colonel, we're almost out of ammunition.
Well, Captain, let's get started. Doc, I'll send you some help over as soon as I get over to the air base. Thanks, Colonel. What about Jeff? He's been gone for hours. It's okay, honey. It's all over. Well, Major, I'm leaving you in charge. Report back when you have the situation well in hand. Good luck, Jeff. Thanks, boy. Well, Doc, I hope now that we got this thing licked, you'll, you'll encourage your people to cooperate with us. Well, I reckon we owe it to you, Major. And it strikes me you uh, are setting a very good example. <laughs> <laughs> 